Good morning, everyone. Greetings. Good morning. See, good opportunity for mic check. All right. Morning, everyone. Good day. We're going to wait a few more minutes for folks to join. Amy, do we have enough folks to get started? Looks like we got 21 on the call. Yeah, that's pretty much what we would expect. So yeah, we can rock and roll. All right. Today is Tuesday, January 16th, and it is a public TOC meeting. Um, your participation means that you comply with the Linux Foundation's antitrust policy notice. And since you've made it, uh, the meeting logistics are here on the screen. We have several TOC members present today on the call. And let's start with our agenda. So we're going to talk about the TUC operations folder PR. We're also going to talk about the health of several projects and some dev stats information around several of the projects. Okay, so let's start with the TUC operations. Um, so if we navigate to the TOC repository, there is an open PR, one, two, three, four, try to make it easy, um, that talks through introducing a lot of the documentation that corresponds with TOC processes and structure for how we do things. Um, a lot of this information has been uh, kind of institutional knowledge passed down from TOC to TOC seating. Um, with support from CNCF stats for documenting a lot of this. Um, and we're formally introducing it into the TOC repo. Um, I bring it up for everyone's attention here because while we did document a lot of our processes, um, there is some details in there that may not have been well known or well discussed with current and past TOC members. So please take a look at this PR if you have time. Um, I understand that it is a lot of information, but we did try to be as thorough as possible. There are some discussion items there. Several uh, new ideas or topics will be discussed out of band of the PR. It's merely to document as much as possible the current practices that the TOC is adhering to. Any questions on the PR for reviewing it, comments? Uh, let's jump over to the project health. Um, 
So for those of you that are not familiar with this, the CNCF TOC board does have a project health page that we use to track specific project health and archive issues and PRs. Um, we have several that have been open for an extended period of time with several comments and several that are brand new waiting on additional public comment periods to end or due dates to pass um, with the project support. So let's talk about open EBS. Is Richie on the call by any chance? Yes. Awesome. Richie, can you talk us through this one? Yes. Um, I did have background conversations during KubeCon. Um, I also documented them in uh, on GitHub. I also had a few further conversations on Slack. Outside of statements of intent, um, there is not a lot happening, and I would be happy to simply move forward with the archival. archival. Okay. How do other TOC members feel based off of the information presented in the issue? And thank you, Richie, for documenting a lot of that there in the comments. Um, just a quick one, just to give a bit of more context here. The, the project team did agree that they were going to archive off the parts of the project that were no longer being maintained and focus on the parts that were being maintained, um, which sounded like a good outcome at the time back in KubeCon, but it doesn't look like they've made much um, uh, much progress on that. Um, also, further to that, the company that sponsors a lot of the maintainers um, has recently changed the product lineup and now they're calling the enterprise products open ebs pro which i believe apart from anything else might also create um a trademark conflict issue you know if if we want to move the project to incubation or anything like that um which is uh frustrating Okay, so I'm hearing a couple of things. Uh, Richie, did you have anything to add? One minor point of information a week ago or so, someone poked me on Slack again that they are going to do things ASAP. Um, I honestly lost trust in, in those statements. Um, on the um, Open EBS Pro, I agree, it's a Linux trademark issue. Um, I'm pretty certain Amy is already taking action, or I can poke Michael about it and uh, Linux Foundation Legal can deal with it because it is clearly against um, trademark. Okay, so let's, I would like to separate the trademark infringement from the archive because it, regardless, it's something CNCF is going to uh, be finding a resolution for. Um, as far as open EBS goes, I, I concur with Richie's assessment that the project um, hasn't been making strides towards any of the discussions or the milestones that we previously provided them with. Um, so I am comfortable moving this project uh, to a TOC vote for archive based off of the information that's been presented and summarized. I see some head nods. All right, Amy, if you can move open EBS to a vote for archive. We've got two go. open, and then I'm kind of like going like, which one makes the most sense? I think the archival one that's like makes the most sense, and I'll just basically like close uh, the other one as part of like the admin action. So, okay, that will happen after this meeting. Thank you. Excellent. And that vote stays open for two weeks. Is that right, or is this an that indefinite can stay open one? As long as we need it to. Um, but it would be really great if it in fact closed before we had a new TOC coming in. So, TOC members. You're going to hear from me. It's going to be great. Yeah. Let's try to get this one done before the end of the month, if possible. All right. Next is Cortex. Is Ricardo on the call? I am. Awesome. Can you walk us through this project? I did not have a lot of time to focus on this, unfortunately. Well, I'll pick it up. Just to get out here. 
That's fine. Let's look at it now while we're all on the call. Um, DIMS opened this in 2022. This has been outstanding for a long period of time. Um, looks like lots of discussion in 2022, several concerns on the longevity of the project. Um, let's see. Looks like Um, Amy, if you can scroll down to the comment from September 8th, 2022, around is Cortex a healthy open source project? Um, it's about seven eighths of the way down the page. Yeah, you're going to, that's the one. Um, They had a release in July of 2022. Um, Ricardo, do you think it would be beneficial uh, to have you re-engage with the project to really understand a little bit more around their roadmap and kind of expectations and the differences between Numir um, yeah. and what's going on? So what, what I can do is maybe open a the help issue directly on the project link here and uh, ask those questions there. Okay, do that, uh, link it to this one. Let's give them a due date to provide feedback and comments as well as where they see the project heading um, within the next six months. Um, I'd like to have that comment and feedback from the project, uh, ideally by January 31st as well before uh, the next TOC takes a seat, but um, we'll see what kind of response that we can get between now and then. Okay, the, the project does have activity, but yeah, maybe we we'll link to the issue and uh, wait for feedback. So six months and uh, we will ask, uh, which questions would you like uh, to be asked there? Uh, um, the ones from that comment? Where they're planning on seeing the project in six months, kind of the, a little bit more of their roadmap and their planning, as well as whether or not uh, the project is healthy. It looks like they have some maintainer uh, bandwidth as well as just uh, issues as well as um, potentially some contributor ladder uh, challenges to bring on new maintainers, but it's unclear from the comments. Um, so really just understanding where they're currently at, where the health of the project is, do they see themselves um, moving to the next level anytime soon? Very similar to a sandbox uh, annual review kind of questions. Does yeah. that make sense? That makes sense. Okay, um, and let's try to get a response from them by January 31st, if possible. That way we can okay. close this. But, but we get uh, the six months. For the so roadmap. we close this one and we, okay. Sorry, just to clarify it. So you, you would like a reply by the end of the month? Correct. And the six that... months was regarding the roadmap and planning? or Correct. Okay. They should have a, at least six months of roadmap and planning that okay. needs to be completed. If they can link to that and provide that to us, that would be fantastic. The okay. The concern is whether or not their future looking and um, forward planning activities are still going on with the project. Okay. Awesome. And Ricardo, Thank you, once sir. you have that note in there, drop it over to me and I'll start like raising it higher for the, uh, it, it may just be the maintainers just haven't seen this um, in a while, so we can help. Okay, yeah. uh, in any case, I'll link from, from this main one to the one in the project. Perfect, yep. thank you. That would be great. Um, all right, next is Curie Fence. Um, this is the new one, we do not have anybody assigned. Um, this was filed in October of last year. Um, looks like we haven't gotten any comments or responses from the code owners um, for the project. And this is Curie Fence, I believe, is a sandbox project. It is. But, this one looks I, like they might not be aware of it. Um, so let me take this one um, and I'll go. Okay. Uh, we, we have some different ways now to be able to like let people know 
um, that like maybe they're inactive. That's also where like the dev stats pieces are coming as well. Um, and they don't rise to dev stats like inactivity. So this may just be that they've just aren't aware of it. So okay, thank you, Amy. Um, all right, and then Bonio. This one, um, I believe we looked at previously and they had a name change, is that correct? I think the repository is read only since July last year. Uh, yeah. So they actually archived it. But there is a different name that they have been using, it's ingrained, um, and I don't see that linked here and that's what this kind of like links back to as well. All right. Um, this one looks like we need to have a TOC member or, or CNCF staff reach out and understand what's going on with the project. Ideally, because they have a new name that should have come back, um, at least for TOC awareness or at least to the tag that they're associated with. Because the new project ingrained looks to be this. If, if, their archive has, if their archive has been archived, then doesn't that automatically mean we should archive it? So I'm um, trying to ascertain. Uh, Amy, do you happen to know, because I'm, I'm reading through the ingrained or the readme on the Phonio readme and it's got a GPL3 license, given that they archived Phonio and that's the conditions under which it was accepted into the CNCF is ingrained, considered no longer a CNCF project and Phonio is officially dead. I think so. And, and ingrained was the one that was supposed to be, yeah, it's ingrained.org is the one they're actually pointing towards as well. Um, and Zoom is very helpfully auto-correcting me, but um... Yeah, I I think I think I agree with the uh, uh like this should like okay. just be archived. All right, so here's what we should do. Let's um, do you think that there is any issue with the existing Phonio Git repository redirecting to ingrained? Does anybody think that there am, is an issue there? Katie? I am actually looking at their website as well, uh, the ingrain.org. And they mentioned they, I mean, they have the big advertisement, their sandbox project. But when I'm clicking on any GitHub links, uh, it redirects me to a 404 page in GitHub. So the project actually does not exist unless I'm missing something. But it seems like it leads to no code repository at the moment. You're right. Mm -hmm. Same thing. So I think perhaps we definitely need to reach out to understand where the code repository is and for the project to remove the sandbox badge from their website because it's an endorsement, which is not true. Concur. Okay, so, um, so let's do this. Let's move Phonio to a vote to archive the project formally from CNCF. And no, then have hold on. Duffy. Yeah, I just found something that makes me wonder if they're just trying to dodge the name problem. If you go to ingrain.org, the the repo that they point to is actually Redshift Phonio D fork or Redshift Phonio D. So I feel like maybe this is actually a a legal thing because they're they basically pointed, they've used the same name on the same project and pointed it at a different repository. If you highlight the fork in this, on the front page of Fonio, it points to a different repository. That is also called Fonio D. Show me, Fonio I'm D. not seeing this. <laughs> oh, let me share my screen. Yeah, of course. Let me stop share and get back to you. <clears throat> So if you go to ingrained.org, right down here on fork, it's pointing toward github.com 
Redshift for your D. Oh, I see. So that's actually what's dead. Is the Redshift one. That so was the one that back. I was running into trouble, but... Yeah, it seems like they just haven't cleaned it up all the way. So, never mind. I thought it was a different thing. Okay, so let's let's move Phonio to uh, vote for archive. CNCF okay. staff, please reach out to Ingrain to have them remove the sandbox status from their page. Um, and I, it is my preference that the Phonio D README be modified to reflect that it is Phonio D and not Ingrain, so we're not inadvertently directing any of our adopters elsewhere. Mm -hmm. But I can, I'm open to others' opinions on that. Okay, so we are archiving them. We are asking them to be able to change things to make things more clear. Both are happening? Yep. Walk me through this. Um, ingrained needs to have sandbox removed okay. um, from their site minimally. Okay. And I think it's reasonable for us to request that whoever has right access to the Phonio Git repository to update the README to reflect that Phonio, a former CNCF sandbox project, has been archived and to not point to ingrained since ingrained is not a CNCF project. All right. That is more clear. Thank you. Yep. All right. Next up is Chris. Um, so Piraeus has until January 31st to provide us with a roadmap and response to the requested actions for resolution as a result of their sandbox annual review. Um, that is the third bullet that is linked there. There has been no comments from the project thus far. So after January 31st, if we still don't receive any comments, um, I think we can propose this project for archive and then do the two week public comment period and then corresponding vote at that time, which I believe throws us into KubeCon freeze. So it'll probably have to wait until after. Um, I can reach out to the project team and give them a poke. Thank you, Alex. All right. Next up, Crater. Um, this project looks like uh, they're self-proposing for archive. Is that right? Um, so they have a two-week yep. public comment period. Yep. Uh, and they've got about one week left. And then they can move to a vote. All right, next up. Uh, open metrics. We already talked I just about need to now. send the email to to kick off stuff, but um, it's going to be merged into Prometheus consensus on both sides. Okay, um, Richie, could you file an issue on the TOC repo so that we could just track that that's occurring? It's documented. Sounds good. Awesome. And then whatever the due date is, we'll check back in on the issue and close it once that's been completed. And then, since we already talked about Phonio, VS Code Kubernetes tools. Do we have a link to that one? No, it's just coming from uh, DevStats directly, but uh, they've, they've not been responsive to <laughs> us. Um, and I was curious if anyone else had any other like input here. Uh, they've got... 267 open issues. If this is the project I'm thinking it is. Yeah. I can try to follow up with, with, with them since um, it's a Microsoft thing. So I'll, I'll put it on my list. Okay. Thank you, Chris. Let's, yeah, no also, let's also file an issue on the TOC repo so yep. that that one is also captured. I will do that. Thank you. All right, it looks like that's all of our agenda items. Might be a fast meeting today. Moving on to questions. All right, any questions? <laughs> um, 
I had a quick question about CubeFS from the project team. They're they're an incubation project, um, and they're looking for a TOC sponsor for to move to graduation. Um, they've been proactive and done and and engaged like their own security audits and a bunch of other things. They would like. Uh, somebody from the TOC to kind of take it on as a sponsor. Um, but I'm not sure like what the timelines would be <laughs> given given sort of the TOC is changing in the next month. Yep. Um, so I can talk a little bit about this. So on the TOC board, um, we do have a board that says applications to move levels. That is the current backlog of TOC due diligence um, that needs to be completed. We have four projects that are currently in due diligence, two that are currently assigned, and Flatcar, which is uh, still ongoing. Um, the way that the TOC executes our queue for backlog items is we try to do first in for assignment pickups. So we try to pick them up in the order that the PRs are filed. Um, however, we also do try to align the project's uh, domain, technical domain, with TOC expertise, if that is at all possible. Um, that being said, we are having a new TOC sitting, and if there are projects that are looking to move levels, they will need to enter the queue and, and enter into the backlog in order for the TOC to pick them up. Um, but projects do not need to be seeking out TOC sponsors. This was a, um, a comment that was made around the term uh, TOC sponsors, implying that projects may need to seek them out. But we are trying to make corrections to that to let folks know that it's very much like a, a Git project and that we assign ourselves those projects as they come into the queue. Oh, if that oh, answered your question. Yeah. Right. OK. So, okay, that's fine. On the side, um, I'll, I'll, I'll give that feedback back to the team. We also have on the TOC repo, let's see if I can find it real quick, underneath of our process, I believe. We have an expectations or an FAQs area that talks through what the schedule, what the expected timeline is for projects once a TOC member assigns themselves um, to the project for moving levels. And it's at least about five months, and that's to account for the time to research the project, to go through the due diligence evaluation, and then scheduling the adopter interviews, which is usually a, a very long process, trying to get everybody's schedules to align, um, and then actually having those and summarizing them. So it'll take a little bit. Um, I know we just talked about where the timelines are. Ah, let me drop this into chat. To set expectations for folks. There. So if anybody has any questions, uh, you can refer back to the timelines and expectations for moving levels on that URL that I provided in the chat. Any other questions? All right. Well, also, just adding uh, a bit of a timeline's expectations, uh, we do not take any sponsorship six weeks before KubeCon, and there is a KubeCon freeze as well, which is two weeks before KubeCon, where we don't open any commenting, public commenting uh, periods, or we don't do any voting. So that's an important um, uh, kind of timeline to remember as well. Yep. Thank you, Katie, for bringing that up. That's also detailed just slightly further down underneath of the timeline section with the breakdown of when things occur prior to the event and after the event with some additional questions. Um, okay. Perfect, thank you. Okay. Any other questions? If not, we'll wrap up today. Give folks back 32 minutes, 31 minutes. All right, um, Ricardo, you came off mute. Awesome. All right. Thanks, everyone. Enjoy the rest of your day. And for our departing TOC members, thank you so much for your service and our last public meeting. And we look forward to our new seated TOC in February.
Thank you. Thank you. Great. Bye. Welcome back, everybody. Bye. Thank you. See you. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Bye.